Hey, it's Biddy Penny. Welcome back to my channel. Today it's no dies, no problem. And we're gonna make some Christmas stockings. So the first thing I did was I did go on Google and Googled Christmas stockings just to get some different ideas about shape, size. I mean, I kind of already had them in my head, but you know, it doesn't hurt. So if you're, uh, that is definitely a great part of the process to do. The next important thing is you need a pencil with a good eraser and usually a ruler for no dies, no problem, but definitely scissors. I mean, this is very basic stuff. The most important tip I can give you is to cut your paper to the size that you want your image to fit. So this was an A2 card front. And I'm going to show you right now how easy it is to scale too large. So I'm going to erase all of this and I'm going to start over. So that's why it's so important to have your paper already cut to the size that you want so that you can make sure that whatever you draw or sketch out is going to fit on your card front. And um, so I've been doing the no dies, no problems for a few months now. And this is the, the big takeaway for me is to start with the size of paper that you want your item to fit on. So this is a curly toe stocking. That's what I call them. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I just think curly toe stockings are so fun. Um, and then here I'm going to make some smaller stockings. And then I did cut a slimline card front so I could make a slimline sized stocking. And I am using an 80 pound paper. So I am using a card stock just because I know I'm going to be cutting this and tracing around it. And you want something sturdy if you just had a poster board or this would be a great thing potentially if you saved um, junk mail. You know, I get huge pieces of junk mail that are really sturdy cards like cardstock, sturdier than anything I have in my collection. And I sometimes save those for different things. And what you could do is just glue a copy weight piece of paper to those so that you have a blank canvas space to draw on. So I would just really heavily glue a piece of copy white paper like with a glue stick so you make sure it has contact with the full surface. And you could sketch on something like that if you don't want to waste cardstock. So, I mean just play and have fun but I do like to have something sturdy because these become templates for me the way I'm gonna use them in the video today is as a template so I'm gonna take these I'm gonna draw them I'm gonna cut them out and then that way I can trace around them and trace them onto patterned paper so I drew a whole bunch of stockings as you can see here and then now I'll start cutting them out. Now, one thing I did do was I went ahead and labeled them like A, A, B, B, just so that the tops, if I cut the tops off, I would know which bottom they went with. So you can definitely label these any way that you want, but that's another thing that I've discovered through my no dies, no problem, is that sometimes it is really helpful, especially if you're gonna start cutting it into pieces to label everything. So uh, I just fussy cut one of the little ones out and really, you know, big objects like this take no time at all. Now I have this gingerbread Christmas collection that I got from Echo Park's warehouse sale not that long ago. Um, yeah, I had fun. Um, what I did is I bought paper collections of things I don't have. So I didn't have a full Christmas paper collection because I just try to limit myself every year on Christmas because it would be easy to go wild and um, so I got one paper pad for Christmas and then I bought like um, baby boy baby girl Mickey Mouse just some things that uh, I knew I definitely didn't have in my paper collection already so that's what I'm playing with here and as you can see, I'm just tracing around my now template onto this pattern paper. And I am leaving the top off. I don't want 
the top to be included in this. Now you can tell I didn't cut the top off of these. In fact, I didn't cut it off all day. I just made two, which I'll show y'all in a minute. So now I will trim all of these out. And you guys, I don't know if I'm a weirdo, but I really like to time myself doing things. And cutting out these stockings took me 25 seconds. Like, you know, because I think we, I, I, I won't say we, I get in my head about fussy cutting sometimes about like, uh, well, I used to not so much anymore, not since I t started timing myself, but like I used to get in my head about how long it was going to take and it's such a fussy process, but then I just started timing myself and I'm like, Toby, it takes 30 seconds. You can do it. <laughs> So I don't know, maybe y'all could try that too. Maybe that would be a motivator for you guys so that if you are a person who is like, I can't stand it, I just want dyes, I don't like fussy cutting, then maybe time yourself and see that it's not actually as laborious as we might have first conceived. Okay, so I did cut out those cute little icons from the cut aparts. And then now I'm showing you here how I just kind of eyeballed how big the tops of the stockings were and cut them out of plain white cardstock instead of cutting apart my templates. Now the, by the time I get to the end of this video, you'll see why I'm really glad I didn't cut them apart. I mean, I could have glued them or taped them back together. That wouldn't have been a big deal either. But I just wanted to show y'all this process so everything I'm showing you all here today, I'm confident that you guys can do for sure. Um, you know, I try to keep the no dies, no problem, pretty simple when it comes to concept drawing, but I think the results are always really fun. So, so far we've done hot air balloons and coffee cups and wonky rainbows. I can't even remember, uh, folded dresses. I honestly can't even remember everything that we've done in this series so far, but if you like this video and this is the first time you're seeing one of my No Dies, No Problem videos, I have a playlist for it. Go and look through there. You might find something else you want to do. Oh, we've done bathing suits and food stands and just all kinds of fun stuff, you guys. Just We've just had a lot of fun with this and I plan on keeping it going, that's for sure. Um, I had a really touching comment in the last couple of days about someone who, you know, she said that, you know, with a single income, she just can't buy all everything she wants or a lot of the things that she sees crafters using. And so, um, you know, this is what the series is made for. The series is made for helping you stay on budget or stay within a budget, but still stay you know, creative. And I think it's just fun. I think it's so much fun to sit down and say, can I make that? <laughs> and how can I make it my own? Right. And you can see you guys, I'm not doing anything too fancy. Like on these, I just kind of cut out an, a flat oval, right. Or I colored it. And then now I'm going to cut it out. And that's kind of the opening of the stocking the top of it. I could have done a different color, maybe green. I could have just drawn it on the white, but I'm just playing and having fun. And that's what I want you guys to do as well. And they will be whimsical and that's okay. <laughs> you know, it gets the point across. People know what these are when they look at them. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just playing with the tops here. I'm adding a little bit of gray with my marker. You could use any brand of marker for this or any type of marker. You don't have to have a specialized marker. I'm not doing any blending. You know, I'm just using a light gray marker to get the idea of like folded floppy fabric. And then I was using um, my Dollar Tree foam tape, which I love to pop these things up just to give it a little more dimension. Now you guys, you could go crazy with these and add like trim. If you have like findings and trim and you could add charms, you could just 
the sky's the limit of what you could do with these. You could even make these out of fabric. Last year, my daughter had me make stockings for her Barbie house. And, um, wow, making tiny stockings, whew, you need chopsticks. So here's my new watercolor palette that I'm in love with. And then I'm going to bring out my color chart because I want some muted colors here. I want this to be kind of like a really soft, muted, rustic kind of stocking. So I'm grabbing my blending chart here and I'm grabbing the colors off of it that I need to mix together. So I'm only doing two color blends with my watercolors. You could, of course, dilute a color down, but then it's just still going to be like the diluted version of that vibrant color and I really after doing that mixing chart you guys it was laborious it was six hours of mixing watercolor which I don't mind because I love watercolor that much but it was worth it because that's how I found like these colors that I'm using today you know and that's how I can see the potential of my palette and honestly <laughs> I kind of want to go back and do it again only because I kind of want to do a light and a dark of each blend and I want to make sure I get it right. I know I didn't get it a hundred percent right last time. Okay. So all I'm doing here, you guys saw me erasing at first, right? So I sketched this out originally and then because I knew I was going to watercolor, I had to erase my pencil lines. Um, and I erased them so that I could barely see them basically. Um, because once you lay down your watercolor, you lock your lines in place. You can't go back and erase your pencil lines later. So little tip there for you. You definitely want to erase them before you start working on it. But now I'm just using that, that soft green color and outlining my stocking as well as um, adding in lines for my stocking. Now this color is an example of why I kind of want to go back and redo my palette. I know that I got some of them wrong and that some of them I got lighter versions. So I, I need to keep playing and mixing. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a palette or a page for reference of some of my favorite colors and their color combinations and mixes so I can quickly reference it and take more time making sure that I get it mixed right and learning how to mix it right like how much green and how much um, you know ochre yellow ochre do I add to make a certain color things like that so I still have a lot of learning to do I still consider myself a beginner when it comes to watercolor <laughs> There's just so much to learn. Okay, now I'm bringing in these so that I can add some gold splatter because it was just feeling still a little plain for my liking, but splatter makes everything better in my world. So I just splatter this little stocking up. You don't have to watercolor. You can use alcohol markers, um, map, uh, colored pencils, um, anything, anything you want. You could ink blend these, whatever you like, however you like to color, you can color these up. Especially when you go back to using like a heavier weight cardstock. Now this is still just an, it's okay. So this is, um, 110 pound index paper from International Paper. It's called Spring Hill Digital. This has long been my favorite watercolor paper for cards because it's lightweight, affordable, and it comes in eight and a half by 11. <laughs> but it's not a watercolor paper. Um, but that's what I chose to draw all these out on today. So now I'm just making a slimline card here and I kept this very basic I'm just cutting smaller rectangles to mat my my uh, card front so I picked two patterns and just cut one smaller than the card base and another one smaller than that mat so that you get each color 
and now I'm going to pop my stocking up on top. Now, because this is a lighter weight paper, I think it's more equivalent to like 80 pounds. It says 110, but you know, you always have to pay attention to how many, the GSM or whatever. Um, but I really do love this paper. All right. I'm using this old piece of fun foam. I actually used to use it as a shim and a die cutting machine when I was embossing and it just, I just flattened it so much I retired it <laughs> but now it gets to be a part of someone's Christmas card all right and I'm using glue and double-sided tape just to make sure we get this really stuck down and there's our first card here's another one now this is the same exact stocking um, it's just cut out a pattern of paper I saw this scrap and I was like hey that could be the sentiment of my card and I won't have to get a stamp set out <laughs> so I'm just using the branding strip that came on the paper and I'm using that as my sentiment and then I'm going to mat that as well with another piece of paper it says a gingerbread Christmas so I use the gingerbread houses and this card for that you guys, it's just a play session. You just play, 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 and have fun. That's what card making is for me. It's time to play. It's funny, I was at Target with my kids the other day, and I was just treating them and um, letting them get some toys. We don't do a lot of toy purchases throughout the year, um, but we just were. They're doing so good at home school, such good attitudes and sweet kids. They've been playing really well together. So we went and got some toys and I got a couple of containers because I really organized my craft room this past weekend and cleaned it. And my kids though, when they got their toys, they're like, okay, we're ready to go home and play. I was like, I'm ready to go home and play too. Because <laughs> that's what guard making is for me. It's playtime. Now this is much like the first slim line that I made with you guys. I was just, like I said, keeping it simple. I knew this would be a long video. All right, here, every three eighths of an inch, I am scoring this sheet of paper in my scoreboard, and I do that for the whole sheet. Then I went back and added a dark pen or marker to make it kind of look like shiplap, and I got out of the lines, but that's okay. It's a wonky Christmas card. I was trying to decide if I would still use it, and I did. It's fine. It's fine. The shiplap is a little wavy. It's seen some years. <laughs> we'll just say that. <laughs> so I have this 49th and Market. This is new. It's a jute twine. I got it because it's a single ply, and I want it. I really like a thin jute, which I learned from being a, stamp, a stamping up customer years ago. I don't think they still carry it, but they used to have one that was really wonderful for card making. So when I saw this one, I grabbed it because I do like a thin jute. So this is going to be kind of just like a little line of stockings hanging on the wall is basically what... I'm doing here and all of these stockings are the little ones that I drew up and then I'll take that jute I popped those up with the foam tape and I'm gonna take this jute and just then tuck it in and I'm gonna use some glue dots so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue dots and I'm gonna roll them up a little just kind of roll them in half stick them right in the top of the stocking And I'll do that to each stocking and then that way I can stick the twine, the jute, to the glue dots. And it's a pretty quick process. It's not too bad. So I really hope you guys will give this a try. I certainly had fun. I have three more no dies, no problems ideas. So you will definitely be seeing more. Um, I have one more that's Christmas related. 
in my head right now. Who knows what we'll have before Christmas, but, um, and then just a random idea that I had. Now here I'm just taking scotch tape and because I am my father's daughter, I have to put two pieces on each side. When the tornado came, I don't know if y'all saw that part of my art journal, but it ripped off our roof and my dad made the boys put twice as many nails in each shingle as they really needed. Looky here, you guys. I made a digital for you guys. This is the first time I've ever done this for a no dies, no problem, but I heard you, I got some comments in my last one that like you'd like to try it, but you weren't really confident in drawing out the images. And so I took all of my templates that I used here today, I traced them on paper, I kind of cleaned them up and I made y'all a digital. Now I added some toes there for the stockings and heels. Um, I added a baby Jesus because we got to keep Christ in Christmas. I added a tree, a star, and a heart that you could put inside. Now I'm going to show you, I was playing around and, um, oh, <laughs> ignore that part. I did a rectangle selection and it, it, in a couple of them, cause I drew them pretty close. Um, it selected other parts of it, but I'm just showing you how I resized things like my star, I resized baby Jesus, I resized some of the stockings, the tree, um, and I put like the tree image inside of the stocking already and the star and the little one. So it's really fun to play with digitals. I did a mirror here. I changed the opacity, see how light that stocking right there is. That way you can do like a no line or a watercolor and not have the black lines. I love the versatility of a digital image and digital stamps. Um, and these are also just templates. Like you could just print these up and cut them out just like I did mine and cut them out of patterned paper or you can color them. But I have them for sale in my Etsy shop. That's just the only way I know how to do it. Um, they're $1.50. You can print as many as you want. All you need is black ink. And then you can just have a heyday. You can resize these. If you want your curly toe stocking pointed the other way, you can change that. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. I will leave them linked below. Definitely give these a try. I really think they're super cute. You can draw them yourself. I'm sure you can. But if you want um, some that are already drawn, so you can just cut them out and play the way I did here today, go for it. I've already colored them up, so I'll have another video showing you how you could color them like digital stamps if you wanted. I had a lot of fun actually making those, and I hope you guys have fun using them. Um, yeah, so I just added some white gel pen details. You could definitely add charms and, um, or you know, like enamel dots, Nouveau drops, sequins just play 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 thank you so much for watching you guys i hope you have a beautiful day bye